Hello everyone, it's Ralph Humphrey. It's nice to be uh, sharing with you today. And uh, I know that a lot of you have decided to share uh, your personal experiences with uh, what's going on in our current lives. I hope everybody's safe out there. Um, I'm enjoying my time here in uh, my home in Mendocino. Uh, it's a beautiful spot of the world, clean air. I can take walks, I can walk by the ocean. And uh, my wife and I are basically sequestered, just hunkering down, uh, giving her time to do her art, giving me time to think about my music, do some practicing, do some writing, and finally uh, getting online here and sharing something with you. So uh, my topic area with you is gonna be rhythmic awareness. And as drummers, uh, I know that it's very important to be as rhythmically aware as possible when you're playing. The smarter you are, the better you're going to be able to lead the band. So rhythmic awareness, to me, uh, there are components of rhythm. And I want to talk to you today about one component, and it's called the metric accent. Now, maybe you haven't really thought too much about what that is. Maybe it's the first time you've even heard the phrase. So let's, let's break it down here, for example. Metric means measurement, okay? You're, you're measuring something. And so when you're looking at or when you're playing music, uh, there's a time signature that is involved. And that time signature tells you the number of beats in a measure and the kind of note that gets the beat. Let's talk about 4-4, everybody's favorite time signature. All right. Now, a metric accent has to do with the most important beats in the bar. Okay, you might think, well, aren't all the beats equal? And the answer is no, they're not. Beat one is the most important beat in the measure. Okay, but what is the second most important beat in the measure? Well, it depends on the time signature, of course. So in 4 4, beat three is the next most important. Why is that? Because it, it, it divides the bar two plus two. One, two, three, four. Downbeat upbeat, downbeat, upbeat. So two and four is the simplest form of syncopation. And we all, all can relate to that for sure. So let's, let's break it down even further. Okay, so beat one and beat three are the most important metric accents in the bar. If we call beat one a front beat, then that means beat two is the back beat. And beat three is the front beat, beat four is the back beat. Without the front beat, you just don't have a back beat. All right. Um, let's talk about another time signature, 3-4, okay? Uh, beat 1 is the most important beat in the measure, but beat 2 and 3 are equally weak. All right, so now we're dealing with a group of 3 before we were dealing with groups of 2. So this should reveal something very important to you, and that is that all rhythm, despite the complication or the simplicity of the music, is broken down into groups of twos and threes. Those are your building blocks of rhythm. And it starts with the meter. It starts with the, the beats in the bar and which ones are more important. Okay, let's take it one more step. Five, four. Okay, five beats in the measure. The quarter note gets the beat. What are, where are the metric accents? Well, beat one for sure. And it could either be that you're dividing the bar three plus two. So it's one, two, three, one, two, or you're dividing the bar two plus three. One, two, one, two, three. Now, which is it going to be? Well, the music probably has a lot to do with which way it's going to be. Or you could decide on your own which way you'd like to feel the bar. So now we have the beat structure. Now there's a secondary line of rhythm that's going to go over the top of that. Okay, this might be your drum pattern. Uh, this might be the feel of the tune with maybe some other note value, okay? Well, that's a secondary line of rhythm. If you maintain mental contact with the metric subdivision of the bar, it's gonna help you to control the rhythm that's going over the top. I know this from experience. I played years with Frank Zappa. Before that, I played years with Don Ellis's orchestra. Now, Don Ellis, great drummer player, jazz drummer player, iconoclast, um, avant-garde musician, he decided to put a big band together of Western-style music 
by Western, I mean not country Western, I mean Western European, along with Indian rhythms. This is where I learned about this concept. And uh, I decided to write a book called Even in the Odds and came out in 19, 1980 uh, because I wanted to share what I was learning from that band. Well, when I went with Frank Zappa, I was actually implementing a lot of what I had already learned uh, with Don Ellis. But Frank, of course, went the whole gamut. He used everything conceivable in terms of rhythm. And I want to get into that subject later on with you. So now you understand what a metric accent is. And I hope that you use it when you play because it's really, really important. The front beat, the metric accents, basically have to be right on the money. But the back beat, the two and the four, or any other secondary beat in the bar, that's where you have a little bit of room to manipulate. And you hear this with various different drummers. Not every drummer feels the same or plays the same. So when you're listening to a drummer, you'll probably notice that the front beats are going to be right on the money, but the back beat could have some slight deviations from player to player. Be aware of that the next time you listen to somebody. I hope this helps you uh, understand a little bit about, you know, the rhythm when you play and uh, look forward to another episode, if you will, because I will be sharing some other things with you. All you all be safe out there. All right. And take care.